Let, let's go back to where we should be. Uh, number one, they should have been raising rates all along, going back to 2013 when Ben Bernanke puked on the on the, uh, the the taper tantrum, they called it, in May of 2013. They should have been hiking rates all the way up. Second thing, they said that inflation was transitory, which everybody in the world knew that was a bunch of garbage. It wasn't transitory. It was real hard inflation. Third of all, we are not doing what we can do to really prevent the, the, the inflation, which is go back to fracking and shale producing, and you won't have to worry about inflation. And the UK and Germany won't be in trouble. And then you could actually enforce the sanctions on Russia. Okay, so everything he said is a bunch of BS and garbage when you look at the bigger picture and what can be done. We should not be suffering through these inflationary times in the United States. We should be able to raise the rates with no problem because they have to go higher because they're really nominal rates are still negative, even if they raise 2% at the next rate hike. So it doesn't really matter. It matters on what we're willing to do to create and save ourselves from these inflationary times. The Fed funds rate is what the bank's borrowing cost is overnight, not what your loan cost. Your loan costs are usually based off of the 10-year notes. It used to be based off a of LIBOR until there was some funny business going on with that, but they're based off 10-year notes. So, you know, it's a it's a premium in notes. So the banks are loving the fact that rates are going higher because their spread's bigger, but it's really, the, the Fed funds rate is based on what banks lend to one another overnight. So now, why are they raising? Because they're, they're, there's a political agenda behind all of this stuff that's going on, which is really to try to create the Great Reset because let's, let's face it, the fiat currency system itself is fraudulent. So we've got a lot of issues and we don't want to solve them because they're easily solved and one is got by going back to fracking and shell producing, which would there would not add nothing to the carbon footprint. Okay. Instead, we've got record amounts of coal being burned right now because of the energy crisis going on. Gold peaked on August 12th again, along with silver, and basically hasn't had an, I think it's had one update since. Okay. So I, I think what you're really seeing is just a market that you know when you look at the price action, the price action has been very ugly for about two weeks and even before after before the rally came. And I think that it's in a bear market. It wouldn't surprise me to see 1600 or less, okay? Again, I think you have to establish in your mind whether you're investing or you're trying to trade it. If you're investing, don't over leverage it. Just buy what you can afford and just put it away. Because I assure you, five years from now or 10 years from now, gold is gonna be double what it is now, but it's gonna take a lot of guts and glory to get through this right. as we see in all markets. It doesn't really matter you know, we what we want to convince ourselves that gold is the savior of the safe asset play. The truth of the matter is, is the number one place where money goes when it's scared is into the U.S. dollar because that's where countries put their money when they're concerned. I'm short gold, and I, I don't I don't see it turning around anytime soon. Could it? Sure, we could rally next week and and get long. Okay, but based on the long term algorithm that I use, we're short, and I don't see any signs of it turning around anytime soon. So I think bearish. that we have to probably, well, I think that, look, I think the stock market, now this again, you have to define what your objectives are, okay? If you're just trying to trade the market, I'd be buying, I'd be buying soft commodities if I was just trading, okay? Mm -hmm. If I was investing, I have no problem that the, the equities are soft. I'd be looking for some value plays there that I know I could hold on to. Same thing with gold. I'd be a buyer of gold, silver, and platinum if I could afford, afford to hold them and was not leveraging. And I'm not talking about buying mining stocks or buying stocks. I'm talking about buying the hard assets that you can either store at Kitco or put in your safe at home, whatever you want to do with it. I'm talking about the real hard asset, but you got to have, first of all, a cast iron constitution to do that. And you got to be willing to hold it and not be able to not worry about panicking out if it goes lower, because it's probably going lower. But it's really just a buying opportunity, in my opinion. It costs the average American, average American taxpayer two thousand dollars a year to finance this ridiculous program, which, by the way, is unconstitutional and will get kicked by the Supreme Court. There is no way that they're going to be able to, to run this program through. Okay, it's going to be kicked at the Supreme Court level. These these loans are not going to be waived. They're not going to be forgiven. And so the American taxpayer is not going to be stuck paying the 2000 per taxpayer. But, you know, again, it's it's obviously we're getting closer to an election. We're doing everything we can uh, from from that side of the aisle to make sure we get reelected, which they won't uh, because they've destroyed this economy. But this is this will never get through the Supreme Court. You can bet on there's a law at the way that the government's being run. And and if we were in a pandemic and still declared as such, which we are not, then the, the president has a little bit more power to make one of these programs stick, but it would still have to clear through the Supreme Court. But based on what is being said and where we are right now, it is truly 
an unconstitutional uh, amendment or whatever he's trying to do, whatever you want to call it. Okay. And if you read the Constitution, which is obviously very dry and dry, but in the meantime, it will tell you that this cannot be done under the current circumstances and what is based in the United States of America. I want my money back. I just paid 500,000. Let me get my money back for my two kids. I paid 500,000, where was my money? I didn't take any loans, okay? You know, again, this is ridiculous. You want the college, you're pushing college. You know, again, you can't change the rules as they keep trying to do. They keep trying to switch the ball. The same thing with the recession, right? Two consecutive quarters is no longer considered a recession. Well, every, if you look at your own bank balance, you know it's in a, we're in a recession. So again, the, the Constitution will tell you and the Supreme Court will kick this with no problem. This is never going to clear through everything that it has to go through. And and by the time it would actually get ready to be done, it's going to be the election. And it would be, it'd be a surprise if the House doesn't completely turn over. This particular administration is really trying for, you know, the Great Reset, OK, which is to make everything equal. And, you know, the Democratic Party, supposedly the party of the small guy, has done nothing but make Google, Facebook, and all the big companies much stronger, okay? And and put every small business out of business, okay? So you tell me what their agenda is. I mean, listen, obviously the party in power today is very concerned about him running for president again. I mean, you have to ask yourself, what are they afraid of? This has never been done before. Now, again, did he take that? I have no idea what he did, okay? And I don't, and I'm not supporting either side here I'm just saying that it's never been done before. And for for seven years now, since the day he announced that he was going to run for president the first time, he has been manhandled like crazy by the press, by the FBI, by everybody. And yet here he is still standing and surviving while the other side, you hear nothing of, of the other things that are going on that need to be investigated. So, you know, again, it's not unconstitutional, but it has never been done before. And I assure you, that every president that has left office has probably has a few things in their closet that they wouldn't prefer people to find out about. I think the midterms are pretty much done. I, I, I would think it's going to be uh, a cremation in the House, okay, it'll be red. And I think that they'll retake the Senate, okay, but they're not going to get to the, uh, I don't think they're going to get to the 60 votes they need in the Senate to actually have total control, which is better. Look, I don't care what party you belong to. I belong to the Libertarian Party. But I don't care who you belong to. I think you always want a mixed government because you need to have some checks and balances, which we have none right now. Go back to fracking oil and shale producing natural gas, and that would be the end of it. We would, we'd be, inflation would go away. America would prosper. The UK would be out of trouble. Germany would be out of trouble. Russia would be in trouble because those sanctions would actually mean something that we put on them. Okay, And we'd be back to a prospering society. OK, but they're too worried about their climate change, ridiculous agenda that will never that couldn't be done for 20 years anyway. OK, no matter what, our power grid wouldn't handle it. OK, and like every other president, and this is every president in my lifetime, has promised to fix the infrastructure. Our infrastructure is breaking down. OK, and to quote President Biden back when the colonial pipeline got got hacked. OK, if you remember, they shut the east, gas on the East Coast. He said, it's not our problem, it's a private company. Well, I got news for you. I guarantee you their security is a lot better and our power grid in the United States is under, could be under attack at any time. And until they fix all those things, there ain't enough power or electricity to run the EV world. Oil is involved in 80% of everything we do because again, there's always an agenda, okay? You know, and the, the agenda is not in favor of the middle class of the United States of America.